Time now for Inside Utah Politics. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Glenn Mills. It's time to go inside Utah politics. And we do begin today with Senate President Stuart Adams and Senate Minority Leader Karen Maine here to break down the 2021 legislative session. Senators, thanks for being here. Appreciate your time. Thank Great you. With you. Uh, every session kind of takes on its uh, own feel, its own personality. Senator Maine, let's start with you. Define the 2021 session. I thought it was very, um, I thought we'd have more, um, not problems, but more disarray. We did not. Uh, I think we had things, uh, things were put in place. I think we had a regimen. I think we had uh, a division where we needed to go. We needed to take care of the economy. We needed to move things along. And I think that everyone was on the same page to make that happen. President Adams, define this legislati legislative session. What was its personality? Uh, it was amazing, Glenn. I mean, think about where we, where, where we were at a year ago. We were shutting down restaurants. We were shutting down gyms. We were shutting down businesses. We were all self-isolating, wondering about our lives and wondering about our livelihoods, whether we'd be in the middle of a Great Depression or what might happen. Because we managed COVID so well, this legislative session was like none other that I've experienced. We funded increases for education. We funded increases for infrastructure, almost $1.2 billion. We funded increases for, for affordable housing, $50 million, and funded Medicaid growth. Uh, the, for the, we helped the vulnerable. We, we did $140 million worth of parks. And all, with all of that being done, we did a $100 million tax cut. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have believed that. Let's dig more into that because that's been a talker this week. That $100 million tax cut, there seems to be some question as to whether or not that could be, that could impact the federal money where we receive from the American Recovery Plan. What's your understanding, President? Yeah, my understanding is because we passed that tax cut before the federal legislation went in place, that tax cut can stay in, actually intact. And uh, that's hopefully the case, and we'll look forward to, to actually being able to do a tax cut and be able to have the federal money to be able to spend it also. Senator Maine, uh, advocates, particularly for children, have expressed concern over that. Do you have some concern there that there could be an issue? Well, I think we need to wait and see. I hope that doesn't happen. As the president said, we need to look into, into that to see if this is uh, we can receive that money without punishment. I hope that's true because we gave, uh, we gave, uh, we took the tax off Social Security, uh, we military retirements, those kind of things needed to be done. And there was other uh, uh, cat, uh, tax incentives that we put in place. They need to be there. So I hope we're not punished for that. Uh, President Adams, what was the biggest missed opportunity this legislative session? You, you know, there could have been bills. We, we had more than a thousand bills dra drafted and introduced. We passed 503 of them. There could have been things that were missed. But when I look back on the session, and I think of what we've done, again, you, I couldn't have believed if you'd have told me that we would have had the type of session we had in my wildest dreams, that we would have funded the things that we funded this last session and done a tax cut. So I think there was very little missed. In fact, I actually think that we opened up the capital for people to participate that couldn't ever participate before because we had re remote participation. We had a committee hearing that had I think over two to 300 people there that we would have nev never been able to have if we had to done things remotely. So I think the session was a great success. And I would imagine some of those things will stick around for future sessions as well. As you just mentioned, there were people in remote corners of the state uh, participating for the first time in a legislative session in their entire lives. Uh, Senator Maine, I think missed the, opportunities. The one thing, um, and I've shared this with the president, I think I can speak for my caucus is I wanted the benchmark for, uh, for Social Security to be higher. I think that that's too low and I hope we can look at that again. When you have two people that have retirements and Social Security, they, prob they probably will go uh, over that benchmark and I think we need to raise that and hope for that opportunity to happen. President, let's get your thoughts on that. I mean, these are taxes we've already paid earlier in life. Why are we being taxed on them again? You know, we were at one of the greatest economies in the nation. We were just recognized by uh, US World and News Report as the best economy in the nation. I hope tax cuts are in our future. And I hope additional- So, you, so you're open to potentially lowering the social security tax even more in the future? Absolutely, and the dependent exemption and the overall income tax. Okay, let's get into some of the specific bills. Let's start with the pandemic end game. 
Senator Maine, uh, we are getting very close now to seeing our mask mandate and other restrictions lifted. Was April 10th the right date for that, in your opinion? Well, you know, I don't think we asked the virus about that. Uh, I'm concerned about a certain date. We don't even know when we have a cold when it's going to end. And I think, uh, I think we should have a vision of, of what we're doing to, you know, take the, uh, take the uh, precautions down. I think that was moving along. But a date I'm, I'm uncomfortable with, I think it's going to be a really difficult, uh, I don't know, harmful to small businesses when they have to pick and choose. If they don't feel safe with them, you know, fighting with one of their customers about a mask and they want to have a, a healthy environment for their businesses. So I hope that doesn't happen. I, I just wish that, because everything's moving so well. I talked to the county today and my entities and they're so hopeful and everyone, they're getting shots, people moving, they're excited about opening our economy. I think those things were in place. I don't like a day that we can, we can just end this. I don't think that, I don't think it's gonna work. I do suspect that people individually still choose to wear a mask uh, and businesses will do the same thing uh, for restrictions in their own stores. I've already seen an email come out from Harmon saying they intend to do that. Right. Uh, President, your thoughts on the April 10th date. Yeah, yeah, we actually saw more compliance in the Senate when we didn't require a mask. I think people are responsible in Utah. I think we've seen that. We have the, one of the lowest case fatality rates. And uh, it's an exciting spot to be. We've got uh, over a million people or a million vaccines that have been administered. Those over 70, almost 80% of them have, have been vaccinated. That's 80% of the fatalities in Utah. We're seeing our fatality rates drop. We're, we're just on a great spot, great economy. Our future's so bright. You know, hopefully we can put COVID behind us and move on. And I, I, think, I think that's happening. And I think it's a very exciting time for the state of Utah. Let's move on to a big bill that really became a big talker this legislative session that I didn't necessarily see coming into the session. And that would be the Dixie State name change. Uh, Senator Maine, let's start with you. Is it time for Dixie State to change the name? You know what? I'm uncomfortable choosing something for an area. We had issues about Moab. Now we have issues about, um, I live in West Valley. I, I, it's difficult to, for me to uh, put a vote on something that's like that, you know, and they have so many tender feelings for that. But my vote would have been to change. If the school feels uncomfortable, and we, we control the school, we have the funding for the school, that's what we have controls of. And if they feel uncomfortable, I think I would have voted for, for that to happen. But I think what we've done now to the, the leadership, we put it back in their hands. So those communities need to work together because something's not working. So I hope that they can work together and find something they're all comfortable with because it's a local thing for them. President, we saw this bill uh, move to the Senate and get held up a bit. Uh, talk to us about what was going on behind the scenes. Well, you gotta love the legislative process because I think we got it right. And I think anytime you can take a piece of legislation and you can make it better, I think that shows that the, the, how the legislative process works. We're gonna have public input through the next year. And I think we're gonna have a solution come back to us in the, in the following legislative session. And I think all along, that's what the original bill in, in planned on. So I think we actually found a balance that allows us to be able to get that public input and be able to make the right decision. And we'll see this back next legislative session. Okay, we have about a minute left, 30 seconds for each. I wanna get on this idea of local control. I never heard from so many uh, city leaders and county leaders saying they felt like their control was under attack by the state legislature. Now I know there was a lot of negotiation and it got to the point where some organizations like the League of Cities and Towns was able to go neutral on some of these issues. Uh, but President, let's start with you. Uh, did you see this element and did you hear that as well? And what was the deal this session? We have a great relationship with the League of City and Towns. Affordable housing is probably our number one issue. We have a strong economy. Housing is a real challenge. We're going to have a great relationship. We, we had one during, during the session with the League and we'll continue to have a, a lot of discussion with the League of City and Towns. And that'll go on even through the interim. Okay, Senator Maine, your thoughts on uh, the le legislature overstepping local control? You know, I, I think it was bumpy at first. But my conversation even today with the county and uh, my communities, they felt as time went on, the bumps were, were leveled okay. and they felt more comfortable. All right, we have run out of time. Great conversation. So glad to have both of you here. Thanks for being here. Great Thank to you. be with you.